okay. Okay, so we go to do the revision for the chapter six. Uh, there's a nuclear uh, physics. Okay, the exam is until chapter six. Uh. Okay, we go through to the first question. Okay, let's see the first one They're about the iodine 131. There's a radioisotope of the iodine. Okay, radioisotope, the sample containing starting, there's a 200 gram of the iodine 131. Then they undergo the decay process. So the half-life 131, there's an eight days. So that means the question already provided the original, the mass is how many before decay. And also they provided the half-life. So that means when you just divide by two, become 100 gram, you are using eight days. So the first one, they ask you what meaning for the half-life. Okay, meaning of the half-life is the time taken. Okay, time taken to do the process of the decay, radiative decay from the original, the drop become half from the original. So that one we call half life. So remember, there's a one of the time, they're not activity. So they just do the activity from the ori, drop become half, then the time taken is how long. So the one we call half life. So the meaning is time taken for the activity of the radioactive to decay. Okay, to decay to half of the original activity. So this one is a definition for the half-life. So now we need to give one reason why the iodine, they need to undergo process of the decay. Why they need to do the decay? Okay, the reason is because they are unstable. So after do the decay, that means the parent, they will produce a daughter, is it? When they become the daughter, that one is a stable nucleus. So that's why there's an unstable. So they need to do the decay. When they do the decay, they should we produce some of the photon, alpha, beta, or gamma. Okay, so this one is a process. When they just ask why the decay process will happen, so your answer is they become more stable. Okay, they want to become more stable, so they do the process of the decay. Okay, decay means the one process to make it become more lighter. Lah. This one we call decay. Okay, now we need to calculate the mass of the iodine after 30. Two days. So from this one question, 32 days, that means you need to find out 32 days actually got how many half-life. Okay, so we're going to ask Du uh, Yong Xuan, Du Yong Xuan, 32 days got how many half-life? Uh, four. Ah, four. So we just take 32 over 8, is it? So we get four half-life. So that means they ask you after four half-life, okay? How many mass you still left? Okay, how many mass you still there? So from here we do the okay. This one we don't have any formula. We don't need to memorize formula because it, so many formula you need to memorize it. So we're using the concept to do this question. So first one we go to find 32 divided by 8. I know there's a four half line. So we divide by 2, divide by 2 for every part. So we start 20 divided by 2 become 100. So this one only one half line. So I continue. 50, 25, 12.5. So now already it's a four half life. So like this, we more clear. Okay, we more understand about the process. So finally, they ask you calculate the mass of the iodine after 30 day, 32 days. That means after 32 days, you still got how many mass still not yet decay. So the answer should be 12.5 gram. Still not yet decay. Okay, the question can ask, after 32 days, how many already decay? They also can ask how many not yet decay. So you must be careful the question. Okay? So from here, so the left, 32 days, they still got 12.5 gram of the iodine. Okay, now we see the question number two. They want you to sketch. Okay, sketch the graph. So that means this one is just now I get it. So you need to sketch. Sketch that means you don't need to follow the exactly the reading. Uniform skill. Actually, you don't need to follow because I got you to sketch only for this part. So from here, we just put all the number in. Then after that, this one should be the curve. Okay, radioactive might be the curve. Uh, just like the inversely proportional. Lah, but you're never touching to the x-axis. Okay, you never touching x axis, but you touch the y because you start from the y. Okay, so the answer become like this. Okay, from starting two hundred, then you drop. 
Okay, then you draw until at the bottom. Okay, until you show 12.5, then you go down a little bit. But don't touch the X axis. So this one is a radioactive half-life graph. Okay, everything you also point. 200, then you got 100. Okay, 100, the half-life is 8 days. Then after that, 50, uh, 16 days. Then 24, then 32. So after that, you draw one curved line to come down. Y axis you touch, X axis cannot touch. Okay, so this one we call sketch. Okay, so this one is a question too. You see this one graph also? Also is a half-life graph from the radioactive decay. So now they're using potassium, 42. Okay, then they emit what? Beta particle. Okay, emit one beta particle. Then after that, they use to trace Okay, to measure the quantity of the salt in the human body. So from here, this one is a graph. They show you the activity. They drop. Okay, then after that, until uh, 30 hours. Okay, they keep dropping. Okay, so the first one, they ask you characteristic of the beta particle. Actually, they ask about uh, what's the beta particle. You can say what either one of the beta particle characteristic. Okay, so anybody here can give me beta particle actually what characteristic? The simple one. Hari? Um, yeah. Uh, can you give me the characteristic for the beta particle? Only one enough. A negative charge. Okay, there's a negative charge. Okay, or you can say there's an electron charge also can. Or you say there's a fast moving electron also can. Okay, there's a simple one, negative charge. Okay, we know beta minima is a negative charge. Okay, then the next one. Okay, they say they determine the half-life for the potassium 42. Okay, so the graph, you need to show just now, we do know half-life is how many. You need to find out from the graph. So that means first, you're going to check from your graph first. We start from 1,600. 1, so 1,600 dy by 2 support is a 800 lah. Okay, sometimes you say, can I start 1,200? I uh, can. Can one. Then you divide by two, they become 600. Then you go to find 600. Lo. Okay, we normally find a simple one. Uh. 800 become 400 also can. Okay, but you need to read the readings. Uh. Okay, you see the 800, uh, a little bit how many, then until 400 how many. Uh, that one you need to take minus uh, 25, uh, minus something. So that one we call half life. If you start from the ORI, 1,600 divided by 2, there's a 800. So you can start from 0. So 800 is how many? Uh, then you go to measure. So from here, they say show in the graph. So you need to show. Okay, cannot just put the answer. So from here, I need to show. 800, the reading is how many? Okay, I find it there's a fourth line. Okay, the fourth one. Fourth one is how many? 11, 12. Okay, 12, ah. Uh, the two boxes become one. So from here, I get it. 12 hours. Show one mark. Answer correct, another mark. This one question already provide the uh, unit. So we no need to write the unit. Lah. Okay, then we continue to the next part. Based on the half-life, state why the potassium 42 is suitable to be used as a tracer okay why we using as a tracer so you're going to check based on half-life so you need to talking about the half-life ah. okay first short half-life and safe okay so this one way we use ah. okay we got to highlight the question first ah. okay we go to original question title ah you can see human body for the human body, normally the half-life must be short because they do not stay longer in the body. So from here, they ask you why potassium is a suitable if based on the half-life. So we just go to answer because short half-life and also safe. Okay, now we need to calculate the time taken for the radio isotope potassium 42 to reduce 1 over 8 from its initial activity okay they want to reduce one over eight from its initial so that means you need to find out until one over eight okay the time taken is how long okay just now from the graph we get it half line is how many 12 
hours. Now you want to reduce, reduce, reduce until one hour eight. So that means before start to decay, sure it's a ori. Ori is how many? Eight over eight is a ori. Okay, eight over eight means one. Lah. Okay, if I'm using the fraction. So eight over eight is a ori. So divide by two, one over two. Divide by two, one over four. Divide by two again, one over eight. Then we stop ready. Because you reduce until one over eight. So from here, go how many half line? Three. You got three half line. So that means you just take three, multiply with the 12. Just now we find it. So the final answer is 36 hours. <clears throat> you want to drop Ori until one over eight left. So that means you need to take 36 hours. Okay, so number three. <coughs> number three, they provided the alpha decay. Okay, alpha decay. So from here, they show the equation. So this one helium. They produce a helium. So name the type of the radiative decay. So you see the helium sure is an alpha decay. Lah. So this one is an alpha decay. Okay, why does the radioactive decay occur? Uh, again, same question. Why the radioactive decay will happen? Okay, because it's unstable. They want to become stable. So that's why the radioactive decay will occur. Okay, so when the question asks about this, uh, this one, so you need to answer because the nucleus is unstable. Or just say they want to become more stable. So they need to do the declaration. Okay, see, they show the table. Okay, atomic mass of the three elements. You got radium, you got random, you got helium. Okay, then this one is a just now the equation. Before it's a RA. Then after they decay, they produce RN and also helium. So the question already provided the atomic mass. Okay, remember the AMU. This one is a mass to calculate for the small atom because it's too small already. So we're never using kg, they're just using AMU to represent the mass. Okay, but this one question, they provided the additional info, okay, for kilogram. Sure, the question want to call you the change, you know? So from here, you see, determine the mass defect in kilograms. So the mass defect actually is what? The mass defect is actually how many mass they already lost. Lost, huh? So that means the ORI, RA, sure, the mass is more than after. So they need to minus. After minus, the mass is how many? That's a, in AMU. You need to convert. Convert become kilograms. Okay? So from here, all the number is here. Don't cut the number. Don't make it one decimal point or two decimal point. You exactly follow the number provided. So we just take RA. Okay, RA is 226.025 minus, okay, minus the RN plus helium. So the RN is 222.018, then plus 4.003. Okay, finally, I get the answer is mass defect. 4 times 10 power negative 3, but this one is a unit, U, A, M, U. Okay, remember the question, they want kilograms. So I need to convert. So I need to convert means I need to multiply because 1 U equal 1.66 times 10 power negative 27. Okay, so from here I need to convert. So I go to multiply. Okay, so I go to multiply 1.66 then the answer should be 6.64 times 10 power negative 30 kilograms. Okay? Okay, so we continue for the next part. Okay, now you need to calculate, because just now we count the mass defect. Okay, we get mass defect here, 6.64 times 10 power negative 30. Okay, calculate the energy released from the radioactive decay. Okay, so energy for the radioactive, we just got one formula for the energy. There's an E equal mc square. Okay, remember many students, they miss out about the square. Mass square, we just copy from the question. Then the C, a C understood. So remember, go to square. So we just press the calculator. Okay, put in all the info. Square. Then we get the answer in Joule. Okay, so this one is a nuclear energy. 
Okay, there we go. See the question uh, diagram four. Okay, diagram four, they show about the nuclear reactor where the nuclear fission that occur to generate the energy. Okay, so from here, this is a nuclear power station. Eh? Okay, what's the meaning for nuclear fission? Uh, this one you need to explain. Nuclear fission, you need, remember, the big, big size separate, become lighter, two lighter nuclei. Then after that, got three neutrons. Uh, the three neutrons, after that, they will separate, go and find another uranium one. So this one we call fission. Fusion is what? Fusion is the balik. The small one, they combine together, become the big one. Uh, that one we call fusion. Now this one is a fission, so we need to explain. We must say splitting. Okay, the unstable nucleus, they need to splitting. Or you say the heavy nucleus. The splitting become two lighter nucleus. Okay, then we're going to see. A heavy nucleus, they go to split into two or more lighter nuclei while releasing large amount of energy. Actually, this one is not complete. You still need to add two or more neutron produce. Okay, this one not complete. Huh? You have me to add uh, two or more lighter nuclei, comma, three or more neutron. Three or more neutron and releasing large amount of energy. Uh, so this one we call perfect. Okay, split two lighter nuclei. Then you say two or three neutron. After that, releasing large amount of energy. So this one is a nuclear fission. Okay, now state about the transformation of the energy involved in this one system. What energy they transfer? Okay, when starting, when starting you do the nuclear fission, this one sure energy is it heat energy. Okay, after heat energy, you produce the steam. The steam want to turn the turbine. Okay, turn the turbine is what energy? Eh? I'm going to ask about the tuition. Turn the turbine is what energy? Ah, uh, kinetic energy. Ah, kinetic energy. And the last one, until they go to generate. Uh, Esther, generate is what energy? Electric, yeah. Yes, finally, sure, it's a electric. So that means heat energy go to kinetic. Last one is a electric energy. So this one is a power station for the energy transformation. Okay, give one advantages. Okay, if you are using the nuclear reactor as a new energy generator. Uh, everybody know the nuclear is not good, is it? But the question they want to ask advantage. So you will find out one advantage if they compare to the fossil. Okay, first one we know A pollution. The sure is not related with the A pollution because the system already closed. Okay, so from here you can say about first one, you can say no A population, but the population for the A go outside. Okay, number two, you can say last a uh, long lasting to be used. You also can mention produce large amount of energy. Uh, this one is the advantages if you're using the nuclear power station. Okay, these advantages everybody know like uh, so many disadvantages. So advantages, you must remember some, lah, one or two, because the question maybe they will ask about advantages. Okay, so first one should be the no air pollution. Lah. Okay, number two, you say uh, long lasting to use. Okay, number three, you can say produce more of the heat energy. Uh, no, not heat energy, produce more of the electric energy. Uh, this one is a good one. Okay, explain how the nuclear fission in a reactor, okay, reactor, eh? reactor, can control the generate the sufficient of energy. Okay, how to control? That means sometimes we find it too much. The neutron is too much. So we need to control. Okay, if cannot control, they become nuclear bomb. So from here, they ask you how the nuclear fission from the reactor, we can be controlled. Okay, remember for this part. Okay, we control by using two things. One is a graphite. Okay, graphite core, they can slow down. Slow down the neutron to come up. When the neutron to come up becomes slow, that means the nuclear fission can be slowed down. 
That means they do not do very fast. Okay, number two, the boron. Boron is, if you slow down, still cannot control. So the boron need to function. Boron is what? Boron want to absorb. Absorb the neutron. But it just absorb the neutron, nothing. Lah. Nothing to be happened already. Because you don't have any neutron. The neutron must be bombarded. The heavy nucleus is it. If you don't have any neutron, that means nothing to be happened. Okay, so these two things they want to control. Control the process of the nuclear fission. Okay, so from here you need to explain. First one, to control the reaction, the number of the neutron which bombarded the uranium atom must be reduced. Okay, you want to control? You must control the neutron. Then you're going to explain how to control the neutron. Moderate, moderate the graphite in the reactor to slow down the neutron. So that means graphite, they want to slow down the neutron. So one of the methods you control the neutron, that means you slow down. Okay, number two, boron. The boron absorb the neutron. So this one is a two method how to make the uh, nuclear fission process can be controlled. Okay, so if you can control, that means we just do the normal power station, just like this one, nuclear power station. That means if uncontrolled, they have become one of the dangerous things that has become bomb. Okay, so this one is uh, radioactive. Normally, they will ask about the question. Okay, now we see the equation again. Nuclear fission equation. Uranium bombarded by one neutron. They produce two things. One is a krypton, another is a barium. Okay, plus three neutron and also energy. So from here, they provide all the AMU mass. Uranium, krypton, barium, and also the neutron. So they want you to calculate mass effect okay so that means before you plus then you need to minus after they produce so from here every number don't cut the uh, don't cut the behind the long one okay that means we need to using the full one don't cut two three five point zero four then you cut the four you take zero only no we need to use four all the info they provided so from here uranium is how many Two, three, five, four, zero, four. Then you need to plus. Plus what? Plus one neutron. Okay? So we just put plus one neutron. Then you need to minus. Minus the barium plus the krypton plus, ah, don't forget, you got three. Three neutron. That means you need to multiply three. Okay? Finally, sure, you got left one. Okay? You left one, that one we call it as a mass defect. Okay, this one mass defect that never mentioned, you need to put kg or no need to put kg also can. But better you put kg because later the question sure call you to find energy. When you find energy, you can straightforward E equal mc square. So the m in kg already. Okay, if not, later you need to chain back. Lah. So from here, I get 0.18 u. AMU, so I convert become kilograms. Okay, convert become kilograms. Okay, this one is normally the question provide. Okay, you no need to memorize about the, uh, this one, one U equal how many kilograms. You no need to memorize the question we provided. So there should be 1.66 times 10 power negative 27, you multiply. So I get the mass is 2.988 times 10 power negative 29 kilo. So this one we call mass defect. Okay, this one mass defect actually is what? Actually is the energy loss. The energy they produce. Lah. Okay, that's why before so many, after decay, why less already? Because some energy already produced. So this one we call it is a mass defect. Okay, so the energy release. Lah. So the question normally they will continue. They ask you the mass defect. The next one sure is a uh, energy. So energy we're using E equal mc square. Okay, so the m is how many? 2.988. Okay, we found just now. So I just put, then you put the uh, speed of the light. 
3 times 10 power of 8 then square. Okay, then after that I get the answer 8.964 times 10 power negative 13 joule. Okay, you see this one question? Two diagram sure want you to compare already. Okay, so from here they got xenon, xenon 133 and iodine 131. Okay, the rate of decay, uh, so you can find it, the graph is almost the same one. Just curve and go down, but got a little bit differences. Okay, now you tell me, which one graph is more stiff? And then drop more stiff, okay? Go to ask Jia Yang. Which one is more stiff? 1.1. 1. 1. Mm, 1. 1. You see very clear one. You see when you put draw one triangle, you find the triangle is very sharp. Okay, when you draw the triangle here. Okay, triangle like this. This one flat a bit. Ah, you see this one is a higher a bit. Okay, then after that wider. This one short, but this one wider is long. High less. Okay, so we find it. This one is more stiff. So that means when you just fall down, ah, very, very short one. Velocity is high, then you go down. Okay, this one, not so high. Okay, because when you just drop velocity, slow a bit. Okay, so this one is called stiff. Okay, now we go to find the question. Meaning of radioactive decay. Okay, what means of radioactive decay? Radioactive decay means the unstable, becomes stable, like, is it? So that one is a process. So you can see. A process which an unstable nucleus become more stable than emitting radioactive radiation. What means a radioactive radiation? That one is a alpha, beta, or gamma. Okay, three together we call it as a radioactive radiation. So this one is a definition for radioactive decay. Okay, next. Ah, five marks. You need to do comparison. So we need to highlight lah. everything to highlight because more easier to see. Because they combine together, we do know how many things they want to compare. So the first one, they want to compare the shape of the graph. Okay? The shape both also is a curve. Then you need to say which one is more stiff, which one is the less. Lah. So this one is a comparison. Okay, number two, you need to say the way of the activity change with the time. Okay, two also decreases with the time. Okay, when the time is longer, the activity becomes smaller. So they will say about two also decreases with the time. Okay, number three, time taken for the activity to become half of the original activity. So time taken, we're going to check lah. This one, 2,000 become 1,000, 5 minutes. 2,000 become 1,000, 8 minutes. So that means 1.1 faster. Okay, time taken for the activity to become half in diagram 1.1 is more than 1.2. That means 1.1 faster to Hilan. Okay, 1.2 takes some time lah because the half-life is longer. Okay, after that, you need to name the time. For this one, activity two, activity to become half of the original. Okay, so from here you can see not enough. One, two, three, four, four only. I got five marks, so you need to add one more. Okay, I think I forget to add. Later I told you what you need to put. Okay, first one, the graph one point one has steeper gradient. One point one have steeper gradient okay then we're talking about the shape lah, steeper okay number two the way for activity change with the time both activity decreases with the time okay then we're going to see number three time taken for the activity to become half so from here time taken for the activity to become half of the original activity in figure 1.1 is shorter. Okay, shorter. So you can add one more. Rate of change of the time. Rate of change of the time. Which one bigger? Rate of change of the time. 
So that means the time taken, you go to change. Which one is a bigger? So the answer should be 1.1. So you put here, rate of change of the time in diagram 1.1 bigger than 1.2. Okay. So from here, they say time taken for the activity to drop. Ma. So now I say rate of change. The change become one of the path. So 1.1 is bigger. Okay. But the time taken shorter, but rate of change is bigger. So different thing, ah. Eh? Rate of change they mean your time put bottom already. Okay, time put bottom over the time. So you help me to add one sentence. Rate of change of the activity in the diagram one point one bigger than one point two. Okay, the one we call rate of change. And the last one, name the time for the activity to become half. This one, we call what time? Name the process name. Lah. This one, process name is what? Okay, anybody can answer? What's the process name here? Eric? Half life. Yes, half life. So the name is half life. Okay, so the whole process, everything we're talking is what? Half life. Lah. Okay, so that one is the time. For this one activity that's called half life so actually here is a four marks uh, you add this now i call you rate of change of the activity diagram 1.1 is bigger okay <coughs> when you see the diagram this one is what nuclear reaction okay we go to ask rayon yes this one is what nuclear reaction nuclear fission Okay, nuclear fission, because you see big becomes small, small. So there's a nuclear fission. Okay, now we need to explain. Explain how the nuclear energy is produced from nuclear fission. So you must say about the first one, how the energy produced. Okay, after the heat, they should produce the energy one, is it? <coughs> how the energy can be produced? If compared, just now I told you, energy actually is a mass effect. Okay, the energy produced because of the mass already minus. So that's why they got energy, like, is it? If both is the same, that means don't have energy loss. That means no energy produced. So now for this one process, they sure got energy loss because the mass already decreased. Huh? Okay, the mass decreased, that means they convert, become heat energy. So then now we need to explain how the nuclear energy produced from the uh, nuclear reaction. Okay, the question never asks you to explain this one process is what. They just ask you how the nuclear energy is produced. So from here, after the radiative decay, mass defect. So you must talking about mass defect. So this one mass defect actually is what. Mass defect that will convert to energy. So from here, the total energy is how many? The total energy we calculate by E equal mc square so this one is a how the nuclear energy is produced okay they produce from the mass deflected okay so this one is the question for the nuclear fission they can ask we just not calculation they can ask about the concept okay so this one is an assay question for the radioactive you can see what is that okay first one they're using the spark counter Okay, connected to the rate meter, they use to detect to detect the level of the milk in the container, in the nuclear uh, lab laboratory. Now the radioisotope source. Okay, they use in the lab emit alpha radiation. Okay, alpha radiation. Huh? Okay, so from here, the setup diagram one point four cannot produce any changes. Let me go problem already. Lah. Cannot produce any changes of the reading of the rate meter. Rate meter, no, no feedback. Okay, no changes, always is the same number. So that means the radiation all pass through already. Lah. So that's why there no changes. Ma. All the alpha pass, pass, pass. That means the reading every time they read is the same. Okay, so from here you are asked to make a suggestion. Okay, oh, sorry. Yeah. The same reading is any changes, not produce no changes means the alpha cannot go. Alpha cannot go, so there's a no reading. Suppose there's a no reading. It cannot produce any change of the radiation. May, maybe a little bit. 
okay but not big number because the alpha okay remember the alpha can go through what only paper that block the alpha so that mean this one container of the milk sure made by the paper lah if the last one lah, the good one maybe using the the uh the thin uh, the thin that one is a uh, high a little bit penetrating but this one they're using the container they say they put the alpha the reading is no changes so maybe the reading is very small or the reading cannot get it because alpha detect already paper they block they cannot go through okay so that's why they cannot read the readings so from here they want to to do the modification make suggestion how to produce the changes of the reading on the red meter they want you to make the red meter i want to read something so able to detect the level of the milk in the container so they want you to modify finally the red meter can read the reading then we know the level of the milk in the container so you yeah, suggest okay based on the following aspect first one type of the radiation so that means sure not alpha already so you need to change okay you change beta or you change gamma then you need to explain okay number two penetrating power okay penetrating means go through okay normally the penetrating power you need high lah because can go through until can detect by the red meter okay number three type of the detector okay i think this one already you lower form got learned is it because form five they already not cover this one type of detector okay during the form three maybe already in your signs okay for the detector the good one for radioactive they only is a gm tube geiger nuria tube because they can detect all alpha beta and gamma after that they can show the reading some more that one is more sensitivity okay the more specific one so the half-life for the radioactive okay radio isotope this is half-life means what half-life for the uh, factory the industry they use the machine they're not talking about the milk half-life they're talking about the machine that produce the radio isotope so that means the machine normally in the industry half-life must long enough why long enough because no need to change much they can use for a longer time but in your body cannot lah. in your body you want longer time for what unless you got cancer treatment a cancer treatment they want for a longer time stay your body but you got something to x-ray something you want to check your body organ ah. actually the half time cannot stay longer in your body okay for the industry the ballet they need for long half life because they no need to change more frequently they can last longer to be used okay state the matter for the radioisotope so the matter uh alpha beta or gamma the matter you want solid liquid or gas normally for the industry we're using solid okay solid so solid partner is who because you got a uh, reason you got characteristic is it so solid every time the partner should be easy to handle easy to handle okay if liquid example i want to check underground pipe virtual is it leakage is it so i cannot use in solid lo, because solid you need to take some time go in you want to dissolve some more let the solid to dissolve so for this one we're using liquid okay so they ask you why using liquid because liquid easy to dissolve together with the water ma. so i can check lo. okay so got different situation we're using using different method so just remind you for the industry normally we using is a solid method when they just answer solid method sure uh easily to handle it okay if liquid dissolve with the water faster so this one is a pair of the explanation and also characteristic okay we're going to see how we go to answer okay first round pen maps table form okay must table form because easy to read so the first one we go to answer beta we're using beta don't using gamma because gamma too strong already gamma too strong that means everything also pass through you also cannot check alpha too weak cannot go also cannot check gamma too strong also cannot check because go through beta okay medium because some can 
if your milk is over level, the beta may be blocked a bit. So your reading got less. Lah. Okay, if the milk is not enough, okay, low a bit. So all the beta go through. That means the reading become high. Then you know this one container, the milk is not enough. So you go to buy the milk, actually the level all is the same. Lah. You don't need to find, oh, this one more a bit, I want to buy this one. No, actually the level is the same. Okay, because they already trace already. So from here, I'm using beta. Okay, actually, I can answer high penetrating if compared to beta, if compared to alpha. Why I cannot answer? Because the second question they ask about penetrating power. So I cannot repeat. Okay, if I say high, then the next high again. So we cannot. So we're using another meaning for the beta. There's a less ionization power. That means they do not ionize with the milk. Okay, so if you're using the alpha, alpha is high ionization. So they will ionize with the milk. So I'm using beta. Beta is a medium. Okay, so from here, they're less ionizing with the power. So second one must be high penetrating. Okay, because you want to go through. So they say able to penetrate container. Okay, but during we do the table form, uh, we never accept the answer is medium. A uh, medium penetrating, medium ionization power. No, we never accept. Because medium, you can say low, you also can be high. So you must specific a bit. You want high or low? Okay, no medium. Okay, so after that, you see number three, type of the detector. So we're using GM tube. Capital letter G, capital letter M. There's a one scientist name. There's a Geiger Muller. Okay, Geiger Muller tube. Okay, why we're using Geiger Muller tube? Increase the sensitivity. That means that a little bit changes, they also can be that. Because they're using the red meter. They show you the reading in digital. So you can read. Okay, half line we need long because this one is for the industry using. So there's a long half line and also can be used for longer time. Okay, you can say last longer. Okay, last one, solid state. Okay, easy to storage, so easy to handle. So this one is a partner for the solid. Okay, so when you do more about the AC, actually you know what is the reason. Okay, for this one, characteristic, ah, the reason must be one pay one. So you do more, then you know how to answer it. Okay, if I say high boiling point, your answer is what? Not easy to boil. Oh. If I say high melting point, not easy to melt. Oh. Okay. So when I say material must be strong, not break easily. Oh. So this one is a, okay, one pair of the aspect and also the reason. Okay. So our lesson just until this part. If you know question, ah, so hopefully you do some uh, exercise. If you do understand, do you know how to solve it, that means you can snap the photo and PM me. So oh, thank you everyone.